PSA, ASI Satellite Studios in Hood River, Oregon. I'm George Thomas, and we are here with Alex Jackson from Carve, Kevin Jordan, and Brenna Kelleher, who are in Portillo doing some testing and development of uh, Carve products. And I mean, that sounds pretty cool that you're down there doing that. Uh, Alex, what are you looking to accomplish from uh, this time with Kevin and Brenna? Yeah, so so we're we're super lucky to get to work with people like you guys. I mean, it's been uh, this trip's been absolutely incredible for for us and for me. I mean, we we've, we've got a a really exciting year this year because we've got a total transformation in our product. Um, we we essentially had an insole that went into the boot under the liner uh, in all previous years, um, but we've developed so much data and so much usage of different levels of different types of skiing and different resorts. We can actually use all of that data and put that product into just a tiny clip that you just put on your power strap. Um, and then it does all the exact same stuff that our old product did. Uh, actually, it does it a little bit more accurately. Now, we're here in Portillo road testing some of that capability on and off piece because uh, the other thing we, we've done this year is expand the range of where the product applies so that it applies, it automatically detects the terrain and it, it measures and coaches you in different terrain as well. So we're basically road testing that and putting it through its paces, making a few tweaks, making sure we got the most accurate product possible. So Brenna, Alex was just saying there was a, not a foot bed, but a, a piece that went into your ski boot. How did that affect the fit? When you've got a really tight ski boot and you're adding something to the foot bed, did you notice when that was in there? Oh yeah, um, my, my boot is very tight. And the first time I tested this product was actually in the North Summit snowfield at Big Sky. I just, I didn't know much about the product. I put the footbed in and then I was like, oh, I, I've got a guide. So I went up to the top with this product and I knew it was going to be tighter, but it was also in pretty steep terrain. And I had some serious foot cramps, but you know, after the first head wall, I was not cramping anymore. My foot was, you know, it was fine. And you eventually got used to it, but I think the difference that these these little new products will make rather than having a footbed is gonna make a huge difference in user-friendly capabilities for anyone who has like difficulties with foot fit in their boots. So some real technical questions here for you, Alex, but first, Kevin, have you you've been skiing with this new unit? and not having the footbed in your ski boot i mean the difference must be huge for you oh yeah i mean it's it's i wouldn't say it's night and day but i definitely modified my boot before um you know for like listeners i used to i used to i have a different boot board that i would swap out and then i would put in so it was three millimeters less and the carb insert was three millimeters so i made room for it uh but now and then here, I know like some, for your listeners, they won't see this, but there's a sleek design, you know, it, it's pretty cool. All you got to do is strap it on. It makes like the the ability to set it up way easier because all you got to do is strap it on, set it up, get it somewhat calibrated, and then you're ready to go. You don't have to go inside to like take off your boot, put something in your boot. You can just kind of go to the snow a lot quicker. And so I personally love it because... I'm playing around with it and trying to track and see like, okay, well, how are my scores comparing to before and after and trying to look at some of the data and what am I doing differently? And as we've like said before, I mean, they're constantly always tweaking uh, some of this, the data and the algorithms and the stuff behind it. So it's, you know, am I, you know, I didn't even know I can make a 90 degree edge angle, you know, <laughs> like I, I know I've come pretty close. I know I've also booted out. So like, <laughs> It's one of those things where it's like, oh, cool, I did that. Or I didn't know how fast I was going until using some of the, the metrics in the app. So, Alex, that footbed, how many sensors were in it? And how can this little unit attached to the power strap of your boot still get all of those measurements not having that footbed in there anymore? Yeah, good question. That, that's the killer question, George. Yeah, I mean, um, so the old... The old product, it had 36 pressure sensors um, and it actually has a motion sensor inside as well. Now, I think 
technology is pretty good in, in general because as you get more data, you can generally make stuff smaller and faster and, and cheaper. And I think with Carve, what we're able to do is we have so much data from all these skiers around the world. We can look at all the patterns in skiing and we can actually drive the entire product just off the motion sensor. Now, when you're skiing, obviously pressures are an important part of skiing, but we found that, you know, pressures sort of, sometimes it's affected by the boot. Sometimes it actually changes based on your intent and what you're trying to do. Um, and a lot of the data that we're capturing on is your skiing going well. A lot of that data is represented really well in the motion and the exact movements that, you're, that we're able to see in your feet. So the sensor is able to detect the movement of each boot on every axis, as well as the acceleration um, co constantly as you're skiing. And through that, we can tell exactly what's happening in your technique. So Brenna, you used the footbed for a while. Are you seeing a big difference in what's being detected and picked up and your measurements between the two different units? Uh, you know, George, I'm not seeing a big difference at all. Um, Which is exactly what I, we want. Yeah, exactly. And I know, like, maybe there are differences that are happening, but there's a huge, well, not a huge team, a small team that's doing a huge amount of work in order to make sure that the data stays accurate. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say on that, what we do to measure accuracy is we, we actually have a, a labeled data set of skis of every single level. We have videos of them and their data. And we actually ask some of the best instructors in the world to grade that, to, to, to grade them and say, well, what level is the skier? And then we test our algorithms at getting the same ranking. So we basically take the best instructors who, who take all these videos and say, okay, well, this is better than this, this is better than this. And then we constantly test our algorithm against that. And at the moment, we're able to actually deliver a high accuracy of assessments based on the, the data we can get from this motion sensor, because it's just so precise, the acceleration and the movement of the feet. So, Kevin, how does that fit to your boot? It's not just, I mean, is it tight to the shell of the boot from the power strap? Can yeah. you show us the unit again and, and how that would go yeah. on? Yeah, so there's basically there's two units. There's a right and a left, and I know some some people might oh, there be is. So you have one thing. on each boot. Yeah, and then what it does is it just clips onto your power strap, uh, and you could either put it in ideally like we've been playing around kind of different locations. Right now, I'm kind of playing with it in the front, like the medial plane, just because we're getting some better data readings from that. But like they are working hard on that to see if you could put it like think of a clock face and and really like anywhere. <laughs> on that clock face. So it just attaches to the power strap. And what's pretty cool is that Brennan and I have been within points. Like there's an overall score. There's something that's calculated through the algorithm that's called Ski IQ. Now, the best way that I can explain this is if you ever had fooled around with like Strava, which is like usually a biking, running or cycling app, they have something where there's different segments and there's a leaderboard. So for example, sometimes Brenna beats me by one point and sometimes I beat her, but typically she beats me by one point almost all the time. So, so that's been fun. And also a little, you know, a uh, little motivation for me as well to just try to get better and, and see what she's doing too, because I'm watching her in real time. And then I can look at her score and see where she's maybe scoring higher than I am to maybe help me make some adjustments so that I can maybe beat her by one point. But so far I've been striking out on that. <laughs> So Alex, looking at this unit, I mean, it looks so amazing that you can just clip this onto your boot pretty much anywhere around the power strap and make it work. <laughs> but when I'm interviewing you in uh, 2028 about the latest car product and your new chip is like maybe this big, <laughs> what, what do you see coming down the road uh, for Carve? Where do you really see... Um, some of your biggest improvements still being able to be made. Um, one of the things you said on a, a podcast we did much earlier was you'd collected something like 500 million turns and you were looking to get a billion. What do you do with all of that information? Yeah, I mean, I think the interesting thing with, with having so much data is we can basically look at common patterns that happen in skiing we can look at all the different terrain that you're skiing on. And actually, like for this year, we, we have a really good terrain detection that allows us to, 
to tell what the snow surface is just from these little vibrations and motions we can pick up through the sensor. Um, so what that means is when you ski on a groomer and then you head off into maybe some crowd or maybe you go off piste and there's some different kind of terrain, the system can tell what, what that terrain is. Now, the reason we can do that is because we have all of that data uh, and we know, you know, in certain situations, this is what it looked like when we were in bumps or in powder or in groomers, and we can train the model, the algorithms to, to figure that out. Now, in general, that, that's all very good because it's all kind of techy and cool if you're into that stuff. But, but what it really means is, as a skier, we wanted to build a tool that you could take anywhere in your skiing and put improvement into every run. So a lot of skiing, like, there's moments where you improve and you, you're training and practicing. And then there's moments where you sort of switch off and you just ski. Well, we wanted to take those, all those moments where you just switch off and ski and put the tools in place so that you could improve anytime you wanted to in those moments. And that generally for us looks like bringing data that you can choose to use. You obviously don't have to use the data, but it's amazing to have a tool that can put that in your skiing. So you asked me maybe what will happen in 2028. I think that's always going to be our mission. You know, we've got to find a way to give people the tools to improve every time they go skiing. Um, and I think it's probably going to look like smaller, simpler, easier, faster. But the mission, I think, will still be the same. Um, you know, we basically want to bring better skiing to everyone because skiing is this amazing sport. It actually gets more fun the better you get. I don't think all sports operate like that, but skiing, it really does. So I think if we can help everyone improve, I think that will be a really good goal. And Brennan, this is some technology that actually works. I mean, you were saying you look at the data and you're able to make some changes based on that data and see some improvements in your skiing. So uh, is that true? Yeah. And it, what's really unique about it is there's things about my own skiing that I never realized that I'm recognizing in certain parts of the turn where it's measuring my pressure and my edge angle. And I'm like, oh, I need to improve in that area. Or I thought I was really good in that area where this turn was usually my better turn, but it's now showing that my other foot's the better turning foot. So it, I think it's a really great tool for instructors, for not just instructors and their clients, but for themselves and each other, because we take on being instructors because we love the sport and we have passion. And that passion is usually derived by getting better at what we do. So this is another tool in our basket in order to get better at what we do and help others get better at what we do. And Kevin, I'd just like for you to expound a little bit on a question that I know is out there and you've addressed it uh, in other podcasts, but I really want you to touch on it again and that CARB is not there to replace an instructor. It's there to assist us and help give our guests even more information. Yeah, I mean, there, like, there's this guy, Charlie, who must, like, his head must explode when he looks at all this data, and he's a data scientist, and he just loves it, and he's got a team. But the thing is, you know, you need, uh, it can provide you the data, it can make some suggestions, it won't necessarily replace um a snow sports instructor because I think there's something to be said for the experience, uh, but you can use it as a tool where I use Thomas for now and he used it as a tool. We looked at some data and then we decided to make some changes together, like in that learning collaboration partnership uh, type of thing. So I think it's, you know, this is something that your students will be using and be showing up to lessons. So you might as well try it. Uh, PSA actually offers a pro deal. So it used to be level two and higher. Now it's level one, two, and three. They can get a pro deal. I believe it's 50% off mm -hmm. uh, the product, which I believe is the, the hardware and the subscription. Is that right? Yeah. I nailed it. Yes. Woo. Uh, that's what I thought it was, but I wasn't sure. But Alex was going to check on me. So the the idea behind that is that you can, you can get a pro deal. You can try them out. You can test them out, see what you think. Then you can also understand how they work and help figure out how can you prioritize for students so that you can make some decisions uh, versus maybe looking at some per somebody's video that they brought or, you know, how the typical ski school ski off or, okay, everybody, we need to watch you ski because we've asked you a million questions, but we need to still watch you ski. Well, what if someone showed up with some data and said, Hey, I'm trying to work on this. 
okay, well, let's go work on that. <laughs> like, it's pretty easy to make some decisions based on what they're coming to the lesson with. Um, Alex, in conclusion, this is good for any age, kids, all the way up the scale? Yeah, I mean, it, the, the thing we really focus on is just ability. I think w what we really care about is getting you from where you are now to giving you tools to get a little bit better. I think it, it doesn't really matter where you ski, what you ski on, what your gear is, what level you are. There's always stuff to work on. So we try and build carb. It, it's very personalized. So it basically is just reacting to your data. So it really does work for anyone. Um, this year, I think the, the big change for us is to bring all terrain into the mix. We've been quite piece to focus. Um, but some of the stuff we're out here testing and, and developing is making sure that the coaching in all terrain is, is really good. But that is basically a, a massive upgrade for us this year. So I think that's exciting as well. Um, but yeah, I think, yeah, basically it's a product that anyone can stick on the boot and learn about their skiing. And just final words from uh, Brenna and Kevin. I'd really like for you just to touch on the seasons getting underway. Um, how can this help me as I'm kicking off my season? It's something I want to get in right away at the beginning of the season so I can see improvement throughout. Give us some thoughts there, Brenna. I mean, I would say it's a really good way to start the season and see where you are in the beginning and where you finish. It's a great tool to take incremental leaps in your skiing and get past the plateau. Same question, Kevin. Well, I think because there's no longer a footbed, uh, I'm going to use this with my two kids. So, uh, you know, nine-year-old, seven-year-old, like I'm going to play around and experiment with them to see. And they're probably going to get better scores than I do, but that's okay. <laughs> I might learn something from it. But my advice would be if you, if you have them, if you get them, if you can try them, if you can demo them, then do it. Pay attention to what you're seeing and then pay attention to what your scores change. So, and then ask yourself the question, well, why have my scores changed? So the hope would be to Alex's point, if my score, say this overall score, which is called like a ski IQ, if it starts at say like a 130 level, but then at the end of the season, you're up in the 150s, 160s, like that is a pretty cool progression and you can track it throughout the season. That's one idea. The other idea would be if you went into maybe some different types of terrain, maybe the scores might be different. Okay. Why is that happening? Well, what am I prioritizing? For example, in moguls maybe i don't want as high of an edge angle maybe i'll want some flatter skis in there and that's a good thing to work on so my edging doesn't need to be as high what is my edge angle in there and carve can tell you that so i think it's one you know get a set two experiment with them and then three may ask yourself some questions well why am i getting those scores that i'm getting and from there you can make this some decisions and you can actually create maybe a training plan based on some of the data and then you can check it. You have an accountability buddy that Brenna has talked about and you can also talk to other people who use it because you're learning things left and right. You can actually look at your particular turn and see that that was a good one. So maybe my right footers are better than my left footers. So now I'm gonna go work on my left footers and things like that. So there's the possibilities are endless. Alex Jackson, Kevin Jordan, Brenna Kelleher, thanks so much for taking the time to chat with us on First Chair. Really appreciate it. Thanks, George. Thanks, Jess. Thanks, George. From the PSI ASI Satellite Studios in Hood River, Oregon, I'm George Thomas.